Hello and welcome to Taiwan Today. I am Natalie So. I'm very excited to have a global expert on artificial intelligence with me here today, Mr. Edgar Perez. Today we're going to be talking about how it's affecting the way we work and the way we'll work in the future. Um, Edgar, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me today. And um, it, it's great to uh, talk to an expert in this very exciting field. I I'm curious, where do you think we are in terms of artificial intelligence? Are we in the baby stage? The, uh, you know, how much have we used so far in terms of its potential? 1%, 5%? Great question. When you think about the progress, we are in the early stages. Still very early. Uh, still early. People talk about the levels when a computer is going to be as smart as a human. And I think that's really going to happen probably in 40, 50 years, if at all. That's kind of relieving. I don't know if I want them to be as smart as a human. <laughs> that means I could be replaced, right? Someone can be, a robot can be, uh, you know, hosting this show with you. <laughs> At this very moment, many activities already have been taken over by robots. Manufacturing, any type of activities when you have people sitting, looking at things, I'm actually spending a lot of time doing so. Now it's replaced by robots. And we, we already didn't even notice, but it's already happening. So please don't be <laughs> scared. Uh, so um, I know that we know that, you know, a lot of machines make... Um, other machines, right? Mm -hmm. Cars or equipment. Right. But what are some of the newest applications of robots that maybe we don't know? Well, think about healthcare. Think about any country that is actually aging. Who's going to take care of the people who are aging? Uh, in some countries, even the young population is not growing as much as before. And well, even the true. aging, the Taiwan 60s, people way. in the 50s, 60s, they are definitely expanding. And therefore, who is somebody who has to be taking care of that person? And there might not be enough nurses to do so. So now mm -hmm. we think about robots who will definitely be doing that work that definitely people cannot do or have, can do something even more productive. Wow. Yeah, I heard that Japan um, is planning to have, I don't know, some 70, 80 percent mm -hmm. of their elderly care done by robots. Okay, absolutely. So how, what are they going to do? They're going to feed them? They're going to... Absolutely. Uh, Many of the things that <laughs> <laughs> a normal new nurse wow, will need to do, some physical amazing. activity, taking care of the, the, the person, definitely that's something that can be controlled by robots. Of course, you will always have a supervisor, a human supervisor there. Of course, a person that age needs to be medical attention on a constant basis. But nonetheless, I think the heavy work could be performed by robots. And it's already happening, as you said, in Japan and other children. Is that also a threat to many people's jobs, though? Would you, how would you look at that? What kind of jobs do you think will be replaced by robots and what kinds will not? Any job would have a number of activities. Some of these activities involve more thought than others. The ones that don't involve as much thought definitely would be easily replaced by computers. So from that standpoint, it's great for every person to actually think critically, what am I doing? Do you think what I'm doing right now eventually is going to be replaced by robots? And definitely think if that's going to help me in focusing my career in the future. So from that standpoint, if you're working in a factory manufacturing cars, that's already replaced by robots. So probably you're not, uh, you're already studying and doing something else uh, in a different way. Anything that's going to be manufactured, anything that's going to be repetitive, clearly think that mm -hmm. that's going to be replaced sooner or later. Now, humans are good at creating things. Humans are good at imagination, creating things, composing new things, creating new pieces of art, for instance. That's something that computers might not be able to do it, at least in the short term. The human touch, right? The human touch, the human creativity, the spark that creates iPhones, that creates computers, that creates new thoughts, that creates a masterful song. That's something that computers won't be able to do it. And I think that's something that could illuminate students, could illuminate people to focus on in the future. Oh, that's exciting. Well, I've heard someone describe AI as the new industrial revolution. Whereas, you know, in the past, most people were in agriculture because mm -hmm. we had to, you know, feed ourselves. Mm -hmm. But now only about 5% of people working in that because of machines and, you know, technology. So in, in some ways, this can open up a lot of new opportunities for us. And what kind of new opportunities mm -hmm. um, in terms of careers and work do you see as a result of... If you think about changes of this magnitude, we're looking at that through AI. Artificial intelligence, deep learning, the application of any neural network, definitely it's creating new opportunities for all types of people. The time that we spend now with our families has increased over time. If you think about the industrial t people looking, living in the UK, for instance, 100, 200 years ago, people were working 14 hours per day, pretty much the whole day That's working true. there and not, pretty much not spending any time with their families or just enjoying the pursuits of any type of life. So on the other hand, today we have eight hours to work and then we have the rest of the time usually uh, for our own families, for our own time. And I think that's something that's being helped by technology. Eventually, more of the tasks that people do at work will be 
overtaken by computers. So therefore, you will have more time to enjoy your life, to do something different. Uh, of course, the people who will be more productive will be the people actually designing these robots, manufacturing these robots, mm. and also creating for them new applications. What about, um, I, I know some traditional um, professions, like I heard the, the legal profession, a mm -hmm. lot of their work can be replaced by robots. And that may affect, well, that affect their salaries because mm -hmm. they get charged by the hour, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, or they charge by the hour. So uh, how do you think that, you know, middle-aged people, let's say, who already are in their careers, how can they adjust to this new trend so that they won't be, you know, uh, obsolete? For lawyer, for instance. Now there are models who are able to review contracts and be able to identify problems with contracts and be able to improve them. That's something that could have taken hours, days, months for humans to review. Machines can go through documents, huge documents in just minutes, hours, and also in help people actually to do more productive work. And I think that's what all humans would like to do too. Can you imagine the, how a person working through these documents on a daily basis would tiring. feel? Yeah, it's Probably very by draining. the end of the day, it would just completely depressed and that's try not to, think, <laughs> not to think about yeah. returning to work anymore. So, Give them something new to do. Give them something more creative. That's uh -huh. what AI is going to allow you to do. So um, what kind of advice do you have for people who uh, are middle age? I guess, who already have professions, right? Mm -hmm to be up to date with AI. Well, what do we need to know and, and do? I think we need to focus on activities that are going to be in the creative side. I think when you think about the humans parts that won't be replaced by computers, that's something that people will need to focus mm. on. Obviously, when you think about people who are composers, creators, uh, people who are designers, for instance, that's the type of thing that we should be focusing on. Now, you might tell me that's not going to be enough for all people. I would tell you, yes, because technology has been already been in place for centuries, and we probably think thought 100 years ago that technology are going to stop people's development, people are going to have nothing to do, what they're going to do. Guess what? We always found new avenues for them to enjoy life and also create new things. Think about the internet. It didn't exist 30 years ago. That's true. And that's a big industry. People are working, living through the internet, creating businesses there, creating websites, new applications that were unimaginable only 30 years ago. So I won't be too concerned. I think something is going to come that eventually is going to create also a new wave of employment for the people who might be threatened today by artificial intelligence. Uh -huh. So this is basically a new industry, right? So new industries that we can even think industry, at this moment. Right, and, and it's adding a new level of technology to everything we do, right? The technology is in invisible for us at this moment, but it's happening everywhere. I think that our smartphones, any device that we're carrying, people will be using also more devices in the bodies, also managed by technology. It's going to be embedding our lives in ways that we cannot even imagine. And something we'll need to develop, design, create that, and that's going to be the future. What have you observed about Taiwan's tech world? And I know that Taiwan wants to develop its AI industry. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the strengths and weaknesses you see in, in Taiwan's tech um, industry? In terms of strengths, obviously Taiwan is the capital of the semiconductor industry in the world. So from that standpoint, I think it's a great anchor to have if you think about future plans for development. Weaknesses, I think every company, every industry could employ more creativity. When you think about the iPhone example, it's not enough anymore to be the manufacturer of the iPhone. Mm. It's, that's not enough. You need to think about now going for the next step, creating the next iPhone, creating the next application, the next device, the next uh, sensor. And that's something that the companies that are so strong here in semiconductors will think about and decide what's best for their shareholders. What about um, young people? Do you have any advice for young people who want to get into this field? Any person, any young person considering a career in the future has to look at different options that are going to have impact long term. I was actually speaking with a person who is studying medicine in the pathology field. And she was feeling a bit uneasy because she felt also that computers eventually will replace their work. They are actually always looking at let's say blood work and they need to design, decide, oh, this picture here shows a problem for this person. Eventually, that's going to be replaced by a robot. Mm -hmm. A robot's going to look at imaging and uh, of issues, let's say CAT scans, results like MRIs, for instance, and they will be able to have a better view of whether that's an issue with a person or not. Guess what? I shouldn't be threatened. Maybe I need to work on an application that will actually help doing so. Maybe I need to think about the billions of people who don't have access to these technologies in the world and who eventually could be benefited by, this, by these applications. So from that standpoint, 
any threat that you may feel in a profession could eventually be replaced from a different approach. How could I leverage this in starting a company or joining a company that is working in these technologies or developing the next, helping other people to leverage this to reach the majority of the population in the world? So we need to create our value, right? The world is changing, or the industry and the technology is changing, right? I know that you, I mean, you're such a great example of how you developed your own career to becoming a global expert in, in so many fields, not just um, AI, but you know, quantum computing, and tell me all the all the expertise you have. You have so many. Oh well, thank you very <laughs> much for your kind words. And, and you're always, you know, speaking around the world, writing books. Um, what did you think when you were developing your career? I think the common theme of the different endeavors in my last decade has been the application of technology in business. Uh, when you think about technology, you think about ways to create, a way to communicate with your customer, to be more productive, to be more efficient, to. Uh, and define new markets. And I think technology will help in all of these endeavors. So my take was maybe a CEO, a person in executive management won't need to know all the detail that is going behind any specific technology, but they need to know the implications. They need to know what's going to be the potential of this technology in their business. And that's what I decided to focus on. Because when you talk about artificial intelligence, it's great to have this technology, but developments are actually put together by PhDs, masters, people who are developing, developing code, programming in computers, but that's not what the CEO needs to know. The CEO needs to know what's gonna be the relevance of this in my business. Will my business still exist in the same way as today in 20 years, 30 years? What do I need to do today to change, to prepare my business to take advantage of this? And that's what led me to focus on initially protecting your business through cybersecurity, leveraging technologies today in artificial intelligence, and thinking about the future too with quantum computing, which is also another way how computers will eventually evolve and change completely the way many research fields are conducted today. So if you can give one piece of advice to people who want to um, develop their careers as technology is changing so rapidly, what would you say? I would say to leverage technology from day zero. If I was a kid four years ago back in Peru trying to speak with an expert in AI, it would have been impossible for me to identify the person, to be able to send a letter and to be able to get a reply. Today, you can go to the university where this person is working, you can find the email, send an email and get a reply in minutes. That capability today to reach the top experts, to get, to get access to the cutting edge information in this world, it's, it didn't exist many, many years ago. And that's something that everybody needs to take advantage of. Maybe mm -hmm. some people are not looking at that's possible today. You have to look at that, you have to think about ways to reach out the best and to be able to get inspired by people what people are doing all over the world. Well, that's great. And you've inspired us today, Edgar. <laughs> Thank you very much, Natalie. So it's been great speaking with Edgar Perez. He is a world expert on artificial intelligence. Thank you so much for tuning in to Taiwan Today. I'm Natalie So.